would like to welcome you again in another episode uh, with the heroes of the Bible. Uh, we talked about St. Mary in one of those episodes. Today you're going to pick someone from the Old Testament. He's known for being really a big hero among all the people he used to live among them. Everybody was afraid and scared even to come closer to him. He has a power that he can carry a gate of a city and climbs up a hill that nobody can come and be closer to him. Uh, I think we all know him now, his Samson. Samson was known for his external or for his physical power but he was defeated with an internal weakness which was his lust. We welcome again Sayyidna, His Grace Bishop Yusuf, the Bishop of the Coptic Orthodox Diocese of Southern United States. Sayyidna, welcome you back again in this episode. Um, Samson is a fascinating character to all the youth. Everybody reads his story. Maybe he can dream that he's having that same power that everybody would be not able to come closer to him. He would be able to scare everyone around him. What do you think, Sayyidna, uh, about this character? How we can uh, look at him and see if this is something that we all look after, to look to be like him, or we can benefit from uh, uh, how he was able to deal with his weakness at the end. What do you think, Sayyidna? As you said, Samson was a character in, in, in the Bible, fascinating to many people. He was very wise. He judged Israel for 20 years. And to judge Israel for 20 years, this means this man was very, very wise. Also, God entrusted him with gifts of the Spirit. We read about him in the book of Judges that the Spirit of God was moving him, directing him. And this physical power was one of the manifestation of the gift of the Spirit in him. Another thing, he was a Nazarite. The angel appeared to his mother and promised her uh, a son, and the son will be uh, a Nazarite to the Lord. And as a Nazarite, uh, he couldn't uh, drink wine. Even he cannot visit places in which there, is, there are vineyards. Also, he cannot touch any uh, dead body. And he cannot shave his hair. Uh, and actually, these three things have uh, beautiful symbols. Not touching any dead body means to remain clean and pure. Because in the Old Testament, uh, deadness is a sign of uncleanness and impurity. And not to drink wine means he is not under control of any uh, habit or any desire. Only he is filled by the Spirit of God to, to move him and to control him. So the only power that control, controlled him was the power of the Spirit. As St. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 5, don't be drunk, but be filled with the Spirit. As the person, when he is saturated with the wine, with the alcohol, he becomes drunk, and then he is under the control of the wine and the alcohol, St. Paul said no. You children of God, be saturated with the Spirit, be filled with the Spirit, then actually you will be under the control of the Spirit. And as the, the drunk person say nonsense when he is uh, drunk, the person who is filled by the Spirit will say hymns, psalms, spiritual songs, as St. Paul said in Ephesians. Actually, they thought that they were drunk when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples and uh, yes, yeah, the day of Pentecost. Yes. Yes. Uh, and the third point, not shaving the hair of uh, his head, is a sign of submission, submission to God. 
uh, and that's why uh, St. Paul spoke about uh, women and said, you know, they have to cover their hairs, sign of submission, and for the man, it is uh, uh, not uh, good for man to, to uh, leave his hair because uh, submission here for, you know, as the Bible teaches us, for the women to men, not, not the opposite. Uh, so he was a Nazarite. But as you said, there was only one weak point in his life. And this weak point was about to destroy his life. Uh, uh, if he did not repent at the end of his life, he would have been lost. But we know that he repented because St. Paul mentioned him among the heroes of faith in, in Hebrews chapter 11. But I think the, 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 the lesson here, if we allow one single uh, weakness in our life to grow within me, and I don't take care of this, I, I don't watch, like the little fox, but like a little hole in the ship, this can make the ship of my life drown completely. Or if I allow little fox, it can you know, destroy the garden of my life completely. Samson also, Sayyidina, uh, was able to defeat a lion by his external power. But he was not able to defeat the lion that was lying in, inside him which was his lust. Lust became a very uh, powerful uh, enemy to most of our youth, especially in this era of exposure to violence, sex, and things like uh, very, very accessible to most of our youth. How do you think Sayyidina can be able to um, defeat this lion that comes from inside. Let me go back to the story of Simpson. As you said, you know, uh, he found a lion and he didn't have anything in his hand. But because he had the spirit of God, he was able actually to kill the lion without having anything in his hand. And what did he find in the line next day? He found honey, which out of the eater came something to eat. And I think God allowed Samson to kill this lion to tell him, if you have my spirit in you, and if you trust this spirit, and if you submit to the spirit, then you will be able to defeat the lion in yourself. Not only to defeat the lion, but this lion actually will be ter will turn into something sweet and, uh, and something, uh, a source of nourishment to many. Like St. Augustine. St. Augustine, before his transformation and before his repentance, he was defeated by his lust. He, has, uh, he had a son from unlawful relationship. But all this... Uh, power that was uh, directed in the wrong direction toward lust and sin and adultery and fornication. After he repented, St. Augustine, all this power of love directed to God. So this bitterness changed it, turned it into some, something sweet. And you can read his confessions and you see what are the, the words of love that he expressed toward God, you know. So that's how the, 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 the out, of some, uh, out of the eater came something to eat, and out of the bitter came, came something sweet. So how to defeat, yes, temptation around us all over. In the media, there is abundance of sin al around us. And I think here, we cannot defeat the sin by our own power by our own human efforts, only by the grace of God. And when actually rely on the grace of God and uh, submit ourselves completely to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, here only we will be able to defeat uh, the sin. Uh, that's why we need 
to fill our hearts and with the Spirit of God and to, to stir the Spirit that we received in the sacrament of chrismation by the means of, of grace. And when, you know, through prayer, through uh, liturgy, through communion, through praising the Lord, through the Word of God, through all these practices, the Holy Spirit, we will be filled, means every area in my life will be controlled by the Spirit of God. Then actually I cannot accept sin in my life. Uh, sin will not be part of my life. Sayyidina, uh, Samson lost a lot of things. He lost his power. He lost his strength. He lost his sight. He lost his freedom. He lost his dignity. He lost many things because of the sin that overruled his life. But actually, at the end of his life, he said a very strong prayer that I stand in front of this verse and I see that it is really, really very strong for our youth to learn. And I would like to hear your uh, comment on this, Sayyidna, in facing daily temptations and could be uh, many, many temptations during just a single day or a single hour. Samson, at the end, he said, O oh Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once. Uh, what do you think, Sayyidna? Uh, this kind of a single prayer each time we face temptation. How strong is this in, in, in the eyes of God? Uh, as I said, you know, in order to be able to defeat the sin, you need the grace of God. And here, uh, that's his prayer. Lord, remember me. Lord, strengthen me. Lord, remember me. That's what the thief on the cross said. Remember me, O Lord, when you come in your kingdom. Remember me in your mercies. Remember me in your grace. Remember me in your love. Remember me in, in, in your power. You know, And strengthen me. Because without you, I cannot do anything. Uh, it's like the St. Peter, Andrew, James, and John. They were fishermen. And they tried to catch fish. And what was the result? We labored all night and we caught nothing. But the second time, because they start to cast their nets, trusting in the grace of God, the word of God, they were able to catch many fish. Uh, so even if I'm enslaved to sin, even if I lost my freedom, because now I am a slave, to one of these bad habits. But if I trust the Lord and ask Him to remember me and to break me free from all these bondages, the Lord will do it for me. And the Lord actually will help me to overcome all these uh, sins and, and, and habits, uh, bad habits in, in, in my life. It requires a faith that the Lord is able if Satan is able to break me, uh, to put me under this bondage, the Lord definitely is able to break all these chains and set me free. And that is a promise that the Lord Jesus Christ told us. If the Son sets you free, then you are free. Thank you, Sayyidina. I think we have uh, a lot of questions about Samson. And I will end this uh, episode with a question that we will answer next time. A lot of youth they look at the story of Samson and sometimes they questioned the way he died at the end. Uh, a lot of youth, they ask this question many times. This is very obvious to them that he committed suicide. What do you think, Sayyidina, about suicide and the way Samson died and how we look at this? We definitely know that he's a hero of faith, but how God looked at this from this point. We will talk about this next episode, Sayyidina. Again, I will end this episode saying if God was able to reveal himself in all these people, he can reveal himself in you. Thank you.